All right, what's up world? Welcome to another edition of Academics in Cars. Again, I'm Jared Ball, and uh, it is our pleasure to once again be caught up with the legend himself, Mr. Tom Porter, who among many other things is academic in his own right, legendary activist, godfather, and we're gonna get into some of that right now, but it's always a pleasure to have you with us. Hey man, man it's my pleasure, yeah. as always. Uh, to be with my illustrious godson. <laughs> uh, I know we're going to get into a number of different things, but it is just striking me, uh, well, striking off the top just to see how different uh, Chapin Street is in Washington, D.C. Hey, which man, is where I we think are. they're bringing these villains in on <laughs> trucks at night because all of a sudden you look up and you see a six story condo, you know. And people walking dogs who were not there when you went to sleep the right. night before. <laughs> you know. So, but look, one of the things you know, I want to get 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 into. Uh, there's a lot we can always talk about. Um, but one of the things I wanted to start off with is that uh, last year there was a book that came out uh, by Barbara Reynolds, uh, a biography of Coretta Scott King, uh, obviously the widow and legend herself uh, of. of her own right, with the widow of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We're about to come up on another anniversary of his assassination uh, this week, April 4th. There's a new King documentary coming out or out now on HBO, getting a lot of attention. You have your own experience, not only in the civil rights struggle and the, the black liberation struggle, more broadly speaking, but uh, directly with the King Center and the King family yourself. And it seems, unfortunately, that in this Reynolds book, there's some mischaracterization of your relationship with Mrs. King and and that struggle. And then, but and beyond. So I want to start there. But then, but beyond that, I think it's important that we maybe start there. But in terms of how these histories are told and represented in general is I think something of great concern to me and something I definitely wanted to talk with you about uh, in this ride. So I wanted to start with that, that uh, this, this characterization of, of you in this book by Barbara Reynolds, which has been touted as, you know, by all the mainstream press as the book of 2017, I think NPR said, the Washington Post lauded it, so it's gotten all this praise. Anyway, but it mentions you by name, and 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 I think, um, as you were saying, mischaracterizes you. So I wanted to let's see if we could start there, and then and, and and go from there. You know, Jared, uh, a couple of things. One is I've refrained from discussing anything that I knew that I knew because I was close in a position of confidentiality, mm -hmm. and so I've refrained from talking about uh, a lot of things because of that, because it would only hurt the thing that I believed in or why I was in a certain place. Mm -hmm. But since in this particular Reynolds book, she has seen fit or has said that Mrs. King uh, saw fit to mischaracterize not only me, but Vincent Harding and a number of people in a book, particularly in reference to the King Center. And you know, I'm reminded of I took one of my daughters to visit a well-known presidential candidate in his hotel room. And so when we left the hotel, I asked her, what did she think? And she said, Daddy, his feet stunk. Mm. And so, so symbolically it says to me that they're great people, but they all have, we all have imperfections. Mm -hmm. And so her and her, her thing that, that Daddy, his feet stunk. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm reminded of a, another musician who told me that a great musician used to visit his house and visit his father, and his feet always smell. But yet he was a great musician. And so that I say, I say that to say that that we're not without our imperfections. And as I read the thing that that Barbara Reynolds said, that Mrs. King said, that first of all, they were untrue. One, they mentioned the Democratic Convention being in uh, California, and but it was in Miami. Uh, and the Miami Convention was a very interesting convention because Shirley Chisholm was also running. 
And it's, it's, it's something about what was said about you. Oh yeah, Mrs. Centered King. Centered at this yeah. convention. Well, Mrs. Right? King mischaracterized it. She said that I said something at the Democratic National Convention in California when it was in mm -hmm. um, uh, Miami. And I just took that to mean, I don't know at what time uh, in Miss King's life that that this interview was done, what mm -hmm. state Mrs. King was in, and uh, because she was ill towards the, the end of her life. So, uh, but I do know Barbara Reynolds, you know, who uh, has talked about her own alcoholism and her own problems. And like many black people, that when everything else fails, we go into preaching a home repair. She's now a Pentecostal minister. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so as my father would tell me, he said, Tommy, there's a thin line between pimping and preaching. <laughs> so with that, with that being said, I initially went to Atlanta, not to head the King Center, but to develop something called the Institute for Nonviolent Social Change. And at this time, there was no such thing as the King Center, only in name. It was in the basement of the Interdenominational Theological Seminary. And they had fired the first staff of the King Center, which was made up of militants and ex-movement people. And Van Harting, Van Har Vincent Harding was the first director. And at some point, they were all fired. Uh, and talking to one person who worked there, she said they were fired because Stan Levinson had accused all of them of being Black Panthers, but actually we're ex state people. So, so there was an attack on Vince Harding, but the attack on me was, uh, it was interesting because I, I didn't go there to head the King Center. I'm at a board meeting and, and Julia Scott, who was the second executive director of the King Center, at one point, Daddy King stood up and said, damn it, Julius, do what we, we're paying you to do. Mm. And shortly after that, he was fired right on the spot. And Mrs. King said, I got just a man for the job. I knew nothing about the, the firing of Julius Scott or announcing that I would be the head of the King Center. And so it happened like that. It was not something that I wanted to do. And But in the book, it's reported as... It's reported as if I was hired, that I, I said that I was um, uh, good at organizational structure and that I believed in nonviolence. Uh, none of these questions ever came up and uh, in any kind of discussions. So it was reported as if you were at, you were you were uh, applying for the job. Yeah, I was when, applying for the job. When, when it was in fact, sort of yeah, I, I never applied right, to be. Right, you know, in right. fact, Jack O'Dell recommended that I go down there and do the, the and help the King Center out. Mm -hmm. But it was very undeveloped. It never got developed. The King Center, quite frankly, was an attempt by the people who were the primary fundraisers for SCLC after the death of Dr. King. They needed. They needed something that they could control in terms of manipulating the symbol and image of Dr. King. So the King Center was set up, and Ralph Abernathy said at the time that the King Center was set up to take money away from SCLC and to undermine SCLC, which was true. Whether that was the intention or not, that's what it did. And so, uh, and also to give Mrs. King uh, a leadership position and, and an income. And, and I understand that, and of course the income extended to the King family. And I'm not talking about the King children. And so, but it never got off the ground. I was the third, uh, the third executive director of Martin Luther King Center. I don't know how many there have been, there have been now. But it never got off the ground because it was never intended to get off the ground. It was basically intended to control and manipulate the image and the symbol of Dr. King in nominating or or endorsing candidates. Um, and so there's this long litany in the thing about how I wanted absolute control and uh, I said that they were wasting money, which was true. They had a $70,000 travel budget spent in one year because Mrs. King didn't travel without other people 
who wanted to go and get photo ops wherever she was going. Well, I mean, I, I, honestly, I haven't read the book, but it, it would seem to me that if you, if 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 someone wants to make an honest uh, assessment of you or anyone else, they would not only include maybe a, a statement of what you said, but your reasoning or logic for saying it or doing it. So if in fact you would have at one point wanted more control over the center or, or said that the center was wasting money, uh, the book might have included some reference to why you were saying that. Oh, Andy Young uh, said at one time yeah. that anybody that ever mentions the word organization is a person that doesn't know what they're doing now. You know, mm -hmm. King had some less than flattering things to say about Andy Young. And, and of course, Andy Young and the King children have on their own fights about rights and what have you. Um, I mean, this is another reason why I wanted to start there with this, because this, this, this whole issue of how are these histories remembered and who's telling the story well, that's, for what that's purpose. Very, that's very, very important. So when you're saying, so, so as you, and then you have your own experience with, with, uh, the, the center and with this, with with the the, the struggle, the history and the struggle. Uh, so you would have a little bit of, of 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 you. I mean, you would know a little bit about what you're talking about. But but so but go ahead. I want. But 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 so you know, the and, and Young is saying something about King and. No, Young is saying anything that. Anybody that mentions the word organization oh, right, 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 right. is a person that doesn't know what they're doing. Andy Young, you know, was uh, it's not a very bright person. Uh, Stanley Levinson once said to me, not something I heard, that Andy Young said he never read Marx because he thought if he read it, he might believe it. <laughs> but he also said that Andy Young's wife was much smarter than he was. Which which was true. Which is often the case. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> for all of us. Stanley Levinson, <laughs> you know, the whole King thing and what went down and the period at which Mrs. King, because I was there for a very, very short time. After a while, I just left, you know, because it didn't make any sense. Uh, but this notion of my wanting to be in control and what have you, anybody that knows me that even when I have authorization to sign checks and it's usually in a situation like at the radio station or at the King Center when there's more than one uh, person who can sign, it usually takes two signatures in times of the King, terms of the King Center, uh, was Christina Martin's sister and Coretta and myself. I never sign checks when I don't know where the money's coming from or where it's going. I'm on record for saying that. Whether it was at WPFW, what have you, I'll put my name on anything. So this warning to be controlled, but the, the issue was is that it became very, very clear that that nothing was happening at the King Center. And uh, I'm known for if ain't nothing happening, I'll leave. <laughs> this is no point in sticking around if ain't nothing happening. It wasn't nothing, nothing happening, and nothing ever did happen with the King Center. It's been a revolving door of uh, executive directors because it was only set up for one purpose. And after the death of Mrs. King, it really had no purpose. And uh, mm. and so you just had squabbles between the children over who owned what and who owned what. But what was interesting about that period, you couldn't really, you really couldn't advise Mrs. King. I'll give you for instance, Shirley Chisholm was running for president and she spoke to the black delegates and she got them all revved up. So I went back to meet Mrs. King and McGovern because they were going to come in next and I told her that I think you should let George McGovern walk in there by himself but you shouldn't go in there with him so McGovern McGovern said that we said we were going to stick together and we were going to be together well I can understand this position facing a room full of <laughs> full of black people who Shirley Chisholm had just revved up what else would he say? What else would he say? Of course, they walked into the room and Mrs. King was booed probably for the first time in her life. <laughs> she was booed, but you know, so a series of things happened like that. Wait, why was she booed? I'm she not... was booed because Shirley Chisholm and you know, that was, I'm on, I'm on bought and I'm boss, you know, she was running for president and she was black and you had all these black delegates, you know. So, you know, Shirley was feisty herself. So I basically, they booed her. Uh, uh, they booed her because uh, 
they felt as I felt that McGovern shouldn't have been using her as a crutch. You know, okay. he's running for Shirley Chisholm you. didn't come in there with anybody. I got you. I nobody got you. else. Oh, they so they were booing in fact in, in, They were booing her because in, she in, was the role in, she was playing. In, in the role McGovern, she right? was okay, playing you, and using you. the symbol of Martin Luther King, really. Well well, so real quick by the way, I, I thought I thought, you know, I, it seemed crazy to have you in a car. You mentioned PFW and and I know you have an extensive history not only in radio but but in particular with, with uh, as you called it, uh, uh Black classical music or right. jazz. I thought we might throw some on. You know, I had to, to pull up some Coltrane. I know that's just your man. You know, throw something on uh, while we while we oh, yeah. while we talk a little bit. Yeah, um, you can't go wrong with train. <laughs> but, I, got, I got a buddy who had an opportunity to hear train, uh, and he was in New York, and he he told me he didn't hear him, but he went to hear somebody else. I've been dying to ask him who else did he go hear. Right, right, <laughs> but I right, right, learn. right, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, oh, I just got distracted for a second. Uh, um, radio no, and train and black classical music. Yeah, no, but but even, but I was going to double back um, to something that you were saying about the, uh, the role Oh, right, right, right. The role Mrs. King was playing for McGovern. Right. Um, I felt very similarly when I saw the other day at the, um, which march was that? The One of the big marches they just had the other the day. Children's march, the children's march. The, right, the, the gun violence. The march of our lives. Right, where, 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 where King's granddaughter was there. Right. Um, giving a, you know, a soundbite statement about peace and... Uh -huh. and 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 what 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 it had occurred to me was uh, again similar to what you were saying about the way these these histories and people are remembered is that King at the time of his assassination in particular was expressing his frustration not only with marches with existing politics but also with as I understood it, understand it, with the limited analyses being applied to the problem, that is, that is so again, when, so when I'm seeing, admittedly, it's just his granddaughter saying, giving a sound bite at a, spe at, a, at, a, at, a at a at a rally about, you know, gun violence in school, or or guns in society. Um, it just it just felt again like a reduction of King back to an issue, an issue that's safe for mainstream liberal media to cover, uh, that doesn't extend to his broader critiques of, of capitalism or racism or imperialism, um, and it just felt again like what I'm I'm expecting we'll see with this HBO documentary. Although I admit I haven't seen that either. That it'll be another more again this this return of King or an attempt to return King safely back to the politics that he's most known for, but were not the politics he was engaged with that ended up getting him killed. <laughs> so oh, yeah, yeah, stuff, exactly. I, and and you know, and all of this stuff that's going on around the 50th anniversary of of the death of King, which is very interesting, because uh, they. They don't celebrate the birth of King in the way that they celebrate the death of King, mm. which is interesting. Almost nothing happened on April 15th, mm. but now they're having a big thing. Like the January 15th. January yeah, yeah, 15th. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it's an attempt to not only revise history, but there are people who played marginal roles in the making of the original history, who are now the interpreters of the history. And so you got a revised history done by revisers. And it's and, and, and it and it's very, very strange. You know, it's it's kinda like when Jesus was assassinated, some of the disciples disavowed Jesus. We told Jesus he should have been cool. Same thing happened with Martin. You know, we told Martin he should have been cool. You know, he had no business stepping outside of the civil rights thing. Right, right. You know, right. he had no business doing this, you know what I'm saying? White people gonna get mad at us and what have you. But nothing of the real king. Right. You know, this the generation of people, and this includes the SNCC people, many of them, and the SCLC people, 
when the jobs came, they took the jobs. When the money came, they took the money and set off on various schemes. And the and the young did an economic scheme. You know, I know people who disappeared in jobs right here in D.C., but they bring them out whenever they talk about the '60s. Right. They disappeared in jobs, jobs which which are just jobs, you know. And uh, but the struggle's not over with. And so, what have they been doing? You know, I like to ask people sometimes. What do members of the Black Caucus do every day? Do you have any idea? I'd like to ask them, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? You don't make any statements about the killings of, 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 of black men and women. You don't you, you don't make any statements at all. What do you do? Well, I've walked the halls of the CBC convention and I've seen some of those rooms and I see the, the banners that adorn those walls and they look like everybody else. Walmart, AT&T, Verizon, uh, and that to me suggests that's what they're doing. They're calling them to get their next, uh, you know, round of funding for the next election. But you know, in 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 in, in the, which the, doesn't leave a lot of time, by the way, to do what you're talking about. That's that's all. <laughs> exactly. But in, in thinking about King, a lot of his frustration near the end was a frustration with the people around him. And, and, and where they were. So his critiques of them, uh, 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 in, in, in his, it's about a minute and 25 seconds on YouTube where he talks about the difference between power and love. Because you know, he like to put him in the love, mm -hmm. you know, the Teddy Pendergrass right, thing. Right. Turn out the lights, <laughs> light a candle. That's where they want to take you to, you know what I mean? And he's saying, yeah, y'all got it. I got this thing about love. I understand that. But, you know, power without love is reckless. That's right. But love without power is weak, anemic, and sentimental. That's right. He was talking to black folks. That's right. And, man, all we see now is a bunch of petty sentimentality, That's you know, right. which is a direct, direct. Obviously, King said we must move from from civil rights to human rights, right. and from reform to revolution. That was a speech given internally to SCLC. But as you always point out also, they also, just in terms of what he said popularly, they always leave off the second half of the, the nonviolent direct action. Right, oh, they always leave out the direct right, action. Right, right, You know, they leave that out, you know. Uh, King believed in nonviolence. Yeah. Right, right. And then of course now they're out this thing with King with how he knew how to manipulate the media. Right. Of course, the media is telling this story. Right. <laughs> you know right. that that they they in they have thrust themselves in the middle of the movement, and it was King using us, so we were an integral part of what was going on. Right. You right. know, yeah, that's a bunch of silliness. So I did also, you know, I know um, I didn't want to cut you off. Also, there was I, think, I didn't know if there was more in regards to the to the Reynolds book that you wanted to respond. Oh to no, or not clarify. Not, not really. Uh, Somebody brought it to my attention. I think Todd Burrow yeah, sent me yeah, yeah. sent it to my attention. I kind of dropped it. Then I heard that uh, NPR was going to do something on the book. So I said, well, you know, uh, you don't just let people. A friend of mine says you have to protect your reputation. Yeah. And so. It was just full of lies. The interpretation of what happened at the King Center, not only with me, but but with Vince Harding and the first staff of the King Center, who actually were fired in Moss and picketed the station, and some kind of way the King Center, in order to quiet that, or Stanley Levinson and Harry Wachtel, they was running the show, mm -hmm. um, uh, put some seed money together to help set up the Institute for Black, the Institute for the Black World, original one and the real one, which Vincent Harding uh, started, you know. And a number of those people are still alive uh, who were involved in that, and, you know, and I've talked to some people about it, how they were fired and what have you. So I just spent a lot of, lot, lot of, lot of time on that, you know. Some people may read it and may believe it. At least my side of the story is out there in the ether. Anybody well, wants to check it out, can check it out. Yeah, I mean, and, and not only, uh, well, sort of what, what I, we've already been talking about, but but as I understand, again, I have not read the book, so I can't, I have to be, be fair and, and careful there, but, but as I understood what I've heard of this depiction of you, it sounds a lot 
it's well I'll put it to the, I'll put it this way it sounds consistent with material that is supported by such mainstream outlets as NPR and the Washington right. Post and and all I mean the accolades that this book has gotten you right. know the book of the year and all that right. um, it's consistent with with the approach politically to to the the materials that these institutions are reviewing so it would be consistent from my point of view that they would in some way praise a book that would demonize you in particular Jose and, Williams and a number of other people but in part because of the politics you represent oh I'm no question not just because of you as an individual but because you represent a wing of this this history that that so much effort is put to deny uh, that I could see why a book that just passingly misrepresents you when others uh, you know similarly situated would be would also contain a version of, of events that would be so well welcomed well uh, you know yeah. and without a doubt it's a hit job mm -hmm. and that's not unusual in the 60s there were there were publications that came out that were hit jobs mm -hmm. uh, a Leslie to be authentic and 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 real and what have you, when in fact, uh, they're just lies. And to say that that Vince Harding, I've never heard anybody call Vince Harding a black nationalist. Right, right, <laughs> I've never, right. I mean, Vince was a, a genuine, uh, spiritual, religious combatant, mm -hmm. you know, and I've never heard anybody. So why would you, why would you take, because Vincent also represents an honest and clear voice in the struggle. I mean, I respect anybody for for practicing what they preach and he did that. And in the in the forward to the most recent release of Where do we go from here? He has a little line in there that I thought was pretty slick where he politely critiques King for being too for going overboard in denying his 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 uh, uh, tendencies towards communism. That in other words, Harding just kind of throws it in there, like you know, I, you know, like something to the effect. I forgot the exact wording, but something to the effect that, you know, I think he went a little overboard in, in suppressing that view of that version of himself, or, or, um, or others went overboard in suppressing that version of himself. Maybe even Coretta. But oh, something, yeah, well, but letting well, you know that that that's where King was somewhat, at least somewhat, if not fully. Yeah, he would only let it out, situated. for instance, in honoring Dr. Du Bois, and he would. In that speech, he says, our blind anti-communism has led us into one quagmire after another. Right. And I think King was 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 wrestling with that um, from a strategic standpoint, not from an ideological standpoint. So I think he was kind of clear about the way forward. But then how do you take people who are a movement that is essentially religious and Christian and, and black folks who are Baptists? Right. I mean, you know, King's very being split the Baptist church, so you had the National Baptist Association right. going one way, and they had to start the Progressive Baptist Association in order for him to have a base of ministers who who thought like he did, you know. But but it's it's, it's you know the revision, which is what they do. History history is always revived in the interest of the conqueror or the imperialist. And um, and and so, but King was very, very clear for him to say that we must move, move from civil rights to human rights, from reform to revolution. I mean, he was very clear about the way forward. And and of course, the people who put the guy in the building across the street were very clear right. about that too. So I do. There, 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 are, there are two other tracks that I, I at least want to throw up there for us to 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 latch on to before, before our ride is over. One, we've already somewhat touched on, and that is is, is Coltrane, jazz, and music, and culture. Uh, I can't not, I, I gotta have you say a word or two on, on, on your views of that. And then the other would be, uh, and maybe you can blend them, as you often do, that, that you always talk about at least two people as sort of uh, examples of the points you've already made, and, and how and how these uh, uh, and how folks get marginalized and ideas get marginalized. And that's uh, Jack O'Dell uh, uh, and Bob Rose. Right, right, right. And uh, so, I, so I, you know, I, I bring them up to ask, you know, sort of more to, as a. I kind of want to have you just say something about 
what do those men or the and the views of those men mean and what does that mean in terms of uh where you think black people should be going analytically in 2018 and, and, and you know going forward like what in their work speaks to the to the viewpoints that we should be if not fully adopting incorporating in some way into our own uh right now you know jack odell who uh I met, he worked with me when I directed to Antioch Graduate School of Education. And I learned so much from Jack in so many books, but one of the most important contributions that Jack O'Dell made, because there's always been this question of black people in this country, are we a nation? What exactly are we? Are we colonized? And, and Jack O'Dell's writing on the situation of black people in this country is a special variety of colonialism. Uh, very few people wrote about that. Uh, one of the courses that Jack taught at the graduate school was the rise of colonialism, which is a major course. Uh, the other course he taught was uh, the social social evolution of the United States. Uh, and Jack introduced me to so many books uh, that I have today, you know, of fascism and social revolution. Um, so many books that I have that, that I use today. Um, and and Jackson Vancouver now, and he's getting on up in age, but he is somebody that I think, I think is really important in understanding how King thought. And it's interesting that Kennedy basically said to Martin that there wouldn't be any March on Washington as long as you had Jack O'Dell. And um, Martin didn't ask Jack to leave the organization, he asked Jack to step back. And um, I remember asking Stanley uh, Levinson, who was he and Jack O'Dell were the two people who were considered to be the ideologues around King, about why was Jack asked to leave and you weren't asked to leave. He said Jack was, dumb enough to write an article in uh, Political Affairs, which was the magazine of the Communist Party. Now that's very interesting for a guy who claimed to be a communist himself. Right. To say that the other guy was dumb enough to write that. And of course I asked Jack about it. He said, man, that was so long ago. And uh, I remember at one point in my life I was thinking about investigating the Communist Party. And Jack was the person who said to me, uh, there's no need to. I mean, you know, he, I mean, he was saying to me that, you know, first of all, if you believe in something, you can believe in that. And second of all, he was saying you shouldn't join that because he'd already been up there. And if you read the history mm. of the Communist Party in the United States, there was always a struggle between blacks in the party and white leadership in the party over the national question. Mm. I mean, that, just that produced some of my own personal favorite literature. I mean, uh, fiction, the outsider uh, at the top of it, right. uh, 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 you know, Cross Damon, I think, Right. <laughs> you know, in many ways tell, you know, I mean, that was anyway. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. You but, know, but, and so, yeah, yeah. and so, and then, and then Bob Rhodes, without a doubt, is most, of, the most brilliant person I've ever met in my life. I've never met anybody who studied consistently D as as much as he could about what was going on mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, I surprise people when I say that Bob Rhodes was an Egyptologist. Yeah, That was something he studied. Bob could, 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 because that's what he did. He dedicated his life to knowing and teaching, and, um, and which is a very lonely existence, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, just, a, just a very brilliant person, just being around him being in the room, being able to teach with him, sit up late at night with other groups of people, you know, discussing ideas and politics, uh, which which is something that I really miss. You, you, you don't really get much discussion today. I mean, that was one of the things that, that, that I've learned through you and, 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 and even him to a lesser extent, that, that the importance of the, the global picture. Right. And the, the, the global experience with race in in adopting that into our own understanding of race in, in, in the experience in this country 
um, that you know that that I don't know. I just that, that and 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 I even was thinking about it recently as we hear more and more about uh, you know this president and these trade deals and China's rise in the global economy or their attempt, you know, and and the the repositioning of of, of African and so-called global Southern economies. And what does that mean for black people here? And to your point just there, I don't hear a lot of people drawing these connections uh, and saying, you know, to say, for us to understand what's happening to us here, we we have got to be better uh, attuned to what's happening to other people around the world. And in, in some ways, trying to find ways to unify with them uh, or find our, find help for ourselves outside of this geographic. We find some way spot. to return back to our position, slippery, pos slippery position on the status pole of America mm -hmm. by coming up with stuff. The Chinese are doing this. Well, well, the Chinese are doing what in Africa? It's not what the Chinese are doing, it's what African leaders are doing. The Africans who are drowning themselves in the Mediterranean ain't running from the Chinese. Mm -hmm. They're running mm -hmm. from African leadership, mm -hmm. you know. But we find a way to go to Africa, come back with all kind of trinkets and clothes and talk about the food we ate, the marketplaces that we've been in, and don't find any room to, to really criticize and see what's happening to the people of Africa. And, and to the Chinese credit, the Chinese are basically telling the African leaders, which is why you have them talking about corruption now, that we're not going to give you any more money to put in your pocket. Mm -hmm. We thought we'd give, we were giving you money to build railroads and what have you, and you driving around in Mercedes and big cars on roads that don't even exist. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we find fault with the Chinese. I met so many authorities on Putin, on Putin, on Putin, but the bottom line of it is, is that the current ideological form that capitalism is running up under now is American exceptionalism. That we're doing what we're doing because we're the only ones that can do what we're doing. So when you see us like selling guns and getting the Africans to fight each other, that's what we're supposed to do because we are exceptional. <laughs> it used to be called, you know, the divine rights of kings, mm. you know, then it was manifest destiny, you know, all of that foolishness, but it's another way of just justifying uh, stealing people's property. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, 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 I mean, it's just particularly crazy. And they finally, um, with the buffoon that they have in the White House, who, who has a crowd that's been developing since the Goldwater Convention. They've been trying to get their hands on the levers of power, you know, and they finally were able to outmaneuver the Republican Party and the Democratic Party because both of them are franchise operations. Right. You know, I mean, the Democrats and the Republicans, all they want is the franchise. That's how they pay their bills. That's how That's they send right. their kids That's to right. college and what have you. That's right. The Democrats don't care nothing about black people and the Republicans don't give a damn about poor white people. They sure don't. You know? That's right. So, so and, and, so that what they're concerned about is mm -hmm. is the franchise. You know, they want to keep, because they get, all get money from the same people. Mm -hmm. They all get money from the same people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, and of course Barack Obama believed, he talked about American exceptionalism. Yeah, he you did. Know. I mean, he did, he did. Um, and too many black people yeah. actually believe that because after all, where else in America could I get in unlimited debt with credit cards and have Mercedes? But I run into people, they tell me all about what their kids are doing. They never tell me about what they're doing to help other kids be like their kids. Mm. You know, I mean, the struggle was about, I wanted for all kids what I wanted for my children. Mm. I just didn't want it for my children to be a lonely world. If you might run into my movement friends, the first thing they tell me mm. is how their children were doing. So if they had connections to Cuba, they'd make sure their kids would be able to get down to Cuba. Not that they would get the a group, busload right. of kids to go down to Cuba, you know. So uh, I mean, for, for my two cents, what I see happening, and I see it with my life and my generation, is that that we just have not properly organized ourselves, and there's no, there's, there, it's, 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 uh, it's too difficult to see how to put that kind of collective effort together. It's too easy to do that kind of individual work or, or to, and it's too easy to fall into 
I just got to do what I got to do for me and mine. Yeah, Especially I mean, when you have, and, but it's difficult when you're up against the state. And that's, and that's we also, never right, understood right. until late that it wasn't Bull Connor. I mean, it wasn't Sheriff Jim Clark. They were symbols, you know. Right. But we were up against the state. Right. right. We were up against the United States government. Right. And imperialism. We want. We never wanted to believe that. Right. And so, what happened is what I call uh, the negation. The yeah. negation. It was very, very clear that they never wanted a generation of young blacks and young whites and young Chicanos uh, uh, thinking for themselves. And so they set about the business of making sure that black colleges and universities would no longer be uh, the incubators for black thought, for rational black thought. I'm not even talking about revolutionary black thought. I'm talking about for rational black thought. Yeah. <laughs> they made sure, and so we see at Howard today and at Hampton, we see it's not only about them stealing money, but there are all other kind of issues that are coming out. Oh yeah. About about what's going on, and interesting enough, uh, they put a sign outside of uh, the administration building renaming it the Kwame Torre <laughs> Student Center. Oh, did they? Yeah. The students just did that? <laughs> yeah. During the, uh, the the protest? Yeah. So. That's so, what's up. So, so we've gone through this long period of negation, and mm -hmm. you're running into some of that, where you are, where they wanted to negate anything that would be a challenge to the state, and they started with the universities. Uh, any anything that might with the with the literature, with the music with the culture, with anything. When you read a critique on analysis of what's going on in black music, it's not done by Mary Baraka mm. or A.B. Spellman. Mm. It's done by some other person who not only wasn't there, doesn't have a clue about what he or she is talking about. Mm. You know, mm. but that's, that the, the struggle in the 60s was not only, part of the struggle was the struggle to be who we were and who we wanted to be and who we should be. We weren't, we were struggling against green hair and red hair. <laughs> Break that, down. I don't even, what, do you, what does that mean? I mean, you know, I mean, we went from like, you know, did our natural hair look good to where, you oh, know, I like with Rocker got a song, got uh, right, right, and right, it's right, beautiful right. black women, black and beautiful soul and magic said, it's her own natural hair, there ain't no red, green, or candy, right. it's her own hair. And we back to like not knowing who we are. You see, right, you know, right. I mean, it's unbelievable. I look at these these people on TV, a black kid gets shot and his mother's on there with fingernails 10 inches long. One side of head is red, other side is green. You know, and everybody loves and Junior. And where, <laughs> can you raise it? I'm, I'm okay. Okay. You can't do <laughs> but, but I'm just saying, they negated all of that. Mm -hmm. They negated all of that, so we don't know who in the hell we are, you know? And we got a, a mythical uh, mm -hmm. image of Africa. You know, we talk about Africa, and we don't even deal with the constant state of Africa. We leap all the way over human history and go back to a period where we were kings and queens. Well, what happened? Well, well, it's not only that, but, my, but, but as others have joked, uh, uh, not all of us were kings and queens. Oh, absolutely one. not. And uh, uh, and that's okay too. You know, we contributed to society. I have a feeling that my ancestors were, were, were at the bottom of the uh, the pecking order, some way, somehow. My father was a construction like, worker, man. <laughs> if he'd have been, if he'd have helped build the pyramids, they'd have locked his ass in there with the, with the, That was gratitude for help building the shit that you can be take your life <laughs> and, and lay up there and rot with the pharaoh. You know. But, but, but. Oh, although at the same time, though, and again, and this is this is this is this is something that's also frustrating. At the same time, even with that 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 wing, there is an attempt to negate the radical analyses that come from an understanding of of ourselves as African or diaspora people. You right. Know, like exactly. That, that uh, uh, and so today's world, and that's why this generation so much is 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 condemning it as the hotep. Uh, the, the 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 popular or the the mis 
pop the, or the popularization of the of the negation. Right, right, exactly. Those, but yeah, yeah. And, 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 and the job and the task for not just your generation, but those of us who still left, is to negate the negation. Right. <laughs> that's what the, that's what the task is, and and you know, I'm 78 years old, but you know. I love a good fight as long as it's a righteous fight. I hear that. Got no problem with that. You so, know? so as as we start to, which way should I go to get back to your spot? Let's keep, keep going. More, yeah, yeah. What, what? Well, I do want you to say something about about music and Coltrane and art. And I guess I would ask because you mentioned him already, uh, uh, Amiri Baraka. What? What, what do you say to people when this question of politics and art come up? What is the responsibility of the artist or what is the responsibility of art or 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 is there? You know, well, you know, Paul Robeson said that the artist must stand. Mm. The artist is not separate. You know, as a matter of fact, the artist has a responsibility. As Cabral said that culture is not only a product of history, but it, it, it gives history direction. Mm -hmm. And so if it's, it, it's like we used to say about education. Education should equip you to deal with your environment. Uh, if your environment is bad, it should equip you to change that. If it doesn't do either of those, you don't need it. It's mm -hmm. worthless. And so culture that separates itself from the struggle, and, 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 and they worked hard to do that. And they did it with all forms of African culture. They turned uh, reggae in the dance hall, hip hop in the gangster rap, you know, jazz in the smooth jazz. You know, you want to hear that people tell all the time, that Coltrane is too deep, I can't understand. I can't read for no, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> so then, you know, you get your wine cooler and listen to the latest version, you know, of smooth jazz. Do you like any of the, 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 the this generation's folks? Gregory Porter and, and, and Yeah, I mean, I like, I mean, Glasper you Glasper know, and them, do you like, do you, yeah, I, I've, I've, you know, I've never seen Gregory Porter. I've listened to his music, but I've seen Robert Glasper, and I think, I think they're wrestling with the same thing that everybody in that generation is wrestling with. You know, they're the product of a lot of different uh, uh, cultural projections coming together. You know, hip hop, you know, rap, and what have you. And so, I mean, they're trying to find themselves. Some of their stuff is uh, I like. You know, but um, I don't think Coltrane was ever really concerned about selling records. Mm -hmm. I don't think that was, um, uh, I think he was very clear what he thought music should be. Mm -hmm. uh, and he committed his life to that, mm -hmm. you know. And as Sonny Rollins said in the movie, he said, Train saw the whole thing. He said he saw the big picture. I mean, that is why Train meant so much uh, to us, and they did everything they could to make us not like Train. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to admit, I, I I was shocked when I went back. I didn't, I, you know, I, I didn't. It was late. I came up after this, but I was shocked to learn how much negative was said of Coltrane. Oh yeah. Uh, while he was alive. Oh uh, yeah, man. And the same critics began to praise him, and for one reason, one reason only, they couldn't stop niggas from going to hear it. Right. <laughs> they couldn't stop it. So they got on the bandwagon. Cause that's the whole thing yeah. is, it's for me and you not to talk to each other. Yeah. You know, I said to a group of junior high school students, this has been over 20 some years ago. I said, um, you know, one thing that they never counted on or they hoped wouldn't happen that you and I would meet. That's right. That I would be standing in that's front right. of you all talking. That's they right. They didn't want that to happen. They, 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 they didn't want that to happen, you know. That is why, so, even in reference to the King book or what happened at WPFW, like you've heard me say before, that I'm not so, so, I'm not sorry about how, you know, I'm never upset when I'm asked to leave. Right. I'm, ups I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised how long I get to stay because they're coming. You know, I mean, they're coming, you know, I mean, of course, you know. So, I mean, I understand that. And that's the reason why people say, well, I should be bitter. But, you know, I'm not bitter because this is the road that I chose, you know, and I knew it would be like this. I didn't think that they would ever forgive me for standing up. And the way I stood up, no matter how I coon, no matter how I buck dance or what have you, they would they haven't they haven't let anybody else slide. So why would I think I would slide? 
You know what I'm saying? And so you just keep on doing what you're doing. And, uh, you know, King was so important because he was honest. Yeah. You, you just mentioned that uh, that uh, they tried to say, of course, there was non-antagonistic competition between young people and older people in the movie. Sure. That is natural. But what it ended up doing was advancing the overall struggle. King, when 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 young people rebel, King didn't say, and he shouldn't be doing that. He yeah. said, I'm not surprised that young people are rebelling. I find it eminent desirable. That's so right. and he so, said it's your fault. Yeah. He said, you know, that, that I love I mean that the line where I always I, I the paraphrase that just, just that that you know people always want to talk about, you know, when black people kill each other or stab each other. But but those are he called derivative crimes. Like the, the, the original crime is what the state is doing, what the, oh, no, the economic you. system is doing. That's the violence and the no. criminality that needs to be dealt with. They, they never gave yeah. a Mary Baraka. They never they never man. I've been sitting in the Bohemian caverns where Baraka ain't saying nothing about anybody, but he's doing his stuff, and some guy stands up and say, I'm a Jew and I don't like what you're doing. He ain't saying nothing about Jews. I had, I had a guy, a Jewish guy once, we were in the airport and we were talking about a Mary Baraka. He just, oh man, he just went off. Said he wouldn't even give his, he wouldn't even attend his daughter's wedding. You know, his daughter's mother was Jewish and he had given his daughter away. I mean, you know, oh, he was the, he, the 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 accusation was that Baraka had not attended. Had not daughter. attended. He gave his daughter away. I mean, one thing about a a Mary Baraka, he was a tremendous, honest guy, and he was a humanist. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he could. I mean, he he was he 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 was 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 a humanist, you know. And the beautiful thing about this cat is that he said to me once. He said, "I try and learn something new." every day but he understood the world world literature he understood america right. and uh, he was in my mind and i've said this before one of the top intellectuals in the last half of the 20th century he may have been near the top and that you know and the world knew that he was welcome all over the world Except here. Except here. That's <laughs> right. You notice that a lot, actually, with, yeah. a, with, a, with a lot of artists and, and intellectuals. Uh, they have an audience overseas that they don't have here, including, by the way, people like Porter and, and Glasper. Yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Ollie Harrington, who you may have known and might not know, he was a cartoonist. Mm -hmm. And when, when we Oh, were, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When, we, yeah. when we were in uh, East Germany mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at a World's Youth, we went by his house, and he said... Uh, that he left the West when Richard Richard Wright was allegedly dead from a heart attack, had a heart attack, and they took him to some obscure hospital outside of Paris. You know, mm -hmm. the 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 presumption was mm -hmm. that Wright was murdered. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Uh, now, how true that is, but he certainly said that's when he left the West. You know. I mean, well, if 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 the question is, well, if the question is someone dying because they were denied the adequate level of of care that they should have received, then right, and probably a whole bunch of other people were definitely murdered. Oh man, tell uh, me about it. Uh, I, I can't speak on the specifics of of what you know. Yeah, I can't either. You know, but the but problem I'm is the the problem. This is, this comes up for me all the time, actually. And the problem with these so-called conspiracies and they're dismissed as conspiracies. The problem is is that when you do study the history of this country or or, or the state or political assassinations, broadly speaking, or even just the history of imperialism, it's it's again consistent. It would be consistent that these things would have happened. It would not be inconsistent or somehow wildly conspiratorial. 
Uh, well, you know, you. So, so, you know. Anyway, but so I know I don't have any. I don't know about Richard Wright, but it's just is you know any more than I know. Uh, I guess about some of the specifics about somebody like Fanon. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> died but, but, not too far from me, you know. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> and Walter Reed Army Hospital, right, you right. know, and saying that that he was he was dissatisfied with the East, with the communists. That's right. And so he turned to his CIA handler. Who brought him to this country? Can you? I mean, yeah, you know, you know and, I, I uh, yeah, I don't even know what all that. That's, well, that's, you, you, you can. <laughs> my thing is, is, I'm very clear. If I that I do know this, as Dr. King said about we we were people who were chained in ships like animals. Mm -hmm. We are great and noble people, you know, heirs of a continent called Africa. But I, I got it all twisted and, and what he said there. But the, but I do know, and I say to people, that I do know that they stole us. That's I'm right. clear on that. And some of us didn't make it. And I'm also clear that, as a friend of mine said, they had to have help. And yes, there were Africans who participated in that. And the only thing I can say to Africans who participated in that and who participate in it today is look what you did. You put Coltrane on the boat. <laughs> you put James Baldwin on the boat. You put Mahalia Jackson, Angela Davis. Look what you did. <laughs> you put your rescuers on the boat. You know, in Brazil. I mean, you put Bob Marley on the boat. You know, you need to think about that. That if there ever was a Garden of Eden, it would be in Africa. God gave you everything. How you fuck that up? <laughs> you fuck up everything. Come on now. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I say that okay. because I run into my brothers and sisters from someplace else and they're always throwing shade on black people all while they got their hand in our back pocket. You know, and you know, so I mean, I have to tell brothers, man, look, whether it's Jamaica or Trinidad, it's just another place where the slave ships stop. Come right, on now. Right. Let's be serious about this right. shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the problem, the, the problem that I have, and I, I, you know, I always see, I definitely see what you're saying, and 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 you know, um, the problem that I always have is that I just always want to throw out there. And I know that the, 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 there's layers to what you're saying, and, and and comedy in what you're saying, but I just always have to point out that, or emphasize that th this is what happens when people are put under the crucible of an, of, of, of imperial aggression or oh, no a dominant invader. Yeah. That people are put into positions where they make horrible choices. That's right. So, so I mean, we can look at it individually. I just look about, you know, at that very micro level in my own life, when I've been put under the most pressure, some of the choices I've made have not always been the most appropriate. And then if we just expand that to a bigger level where you're dealing with Conditions of a people or a state or a nation that's being invaded and colonized and enslaved, then of course you're going to make a lot of dis bad decisions, uh, and that's what I think is still influencing the bad decisions of today. And that's what the King said. And that's why people like King have to be constantly, even assassinated or reimaged after death. You know, as King said, it's all right to fumble the ball as long as you recover it, but mm -hmm. don't just keep fumbling the damn ball right. now, trying to cover up. Let's just. That's like, you know, if African people play their cards face up, mm -hmm. they're, they're, there's no telling what could happen in a positive way. That's right. You know, so my critique was not to critique Africans or Africa, but to say that this is what happened. Well, and for me, it would be, I'm sorry to cut you off, but for me, the critique where I agree with it would be, I want to critique anyone who leaves out that context that we just described. Right. So if you're going to come over here and look at black people and, and with, with disdain and, and derision right. without understanding the context, well, then we have to rebuild that for you as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I mean, and, and that's a discussion that we have to have, you know, yeah. if, uh, you know, I mean, the fact of it is... Hmm. Rather, you know, rather than throwing shade on the Chinese, let's see how a people made up of different ethnic, different languages mm. have come together. But also be realistic about their situation too. Like, like I think there's a kind of um, uh, romanticism that people heap onto these other groups as well. When, especially when people say, "Well, look at what the Jews have done, or the Chinese have done, or the Koreans are doing, or whatever, or the Arabs are doing in these communities." 
my response is, is 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 often the same thing. Like, but don't forget what those communities are like that these people have come from. Right. And exactly. let's not forget what's going on in their own countries. Like, it's not all good in China for every Chinese person. Oh, that's true. And it's not all good for the people who work in these restaurants for 24 hours a day to send whatever few dollars get back to their families elsewhere. Like, so like when I like like I pointed like the corner store near, near where I live. Um, I think it's Pakistani, uh, but I see, but my point is, yeah, they may not be black, but at the same time, it's the same Pakistani people I see in there every time I go in there. Right. In other words, it, it it's a handful of them that are doing a lot of work Right. for a lot of people back home whose lives are no better off than the black people here who other people want to come here and make fun of. Right. <laughs> so in other words, it's like... We gotta be real, like, and they're taking a specific advantage of something that's not helping all of their people. And we have to be realistic in, in, in I think also when we say what we're doing, uh, kind of going back to your point about people's kids. Right. Like what we're able to do for ourselves is not necessarily something we can duplicate for everybody else and doesn't speak to the broader conditions of those communities either. Anyway, so I just think there's a lot of, like a lot of context has to be built when people make these, these points. Um, Oh yeah, and without, I'm glad you know, that you, with, you raised that one. But day. you know, yeah. with, you know, with, with, you know, without a doubt. But the I like to say in front of a group of people when I'll, I'll somehow say something like, "Well, you know, I'm a communist," which yeah. you know, which which sends everybody into some. Oh no, you didn't say that. Yeah, oh right, my right, God, right, right. you didn't say that. But I say that to say, you know, in tongue in cheek, that that. The system that we live under, called capitalism, which may have been better than it is now, but it was never a day when it existed without screwing over other people in a major way. That's right. And and now it has reached. It is on a descending line of development. It ain't nothing. The question is, is what price are the people going to pay? But there's no doubt that this scene is on a descending line of development. Mm. And I, I pointed mm. out to a friend of mine, you ever mm. notice how they never they never mention development? They always mention the economy is growing because the people are de-developing. That's right. The people are going backwards. And, this, and it confuses people into thinking that their lives are attached to the economy right. in that way. In other words, when they say it's doing well, that doesn't mean you're doing well. Right. That often means the exact opposite. I mean, growth does, you know, the entire society can, you can have growth without black people hitting rock bottom. That's it. You know. Or well, with black people hitting rock you're bottom. With, you That's know. That's right. And so, you know, but, uh, hey, brother, it's been nice. Hey, man, look, we're going to have to do this again. Mr. Okay. Tom Porter, thank you very much for joining us for this edition of Academics and Cars. Man. Oh, man, I, I've enjoyed I, I it. I really appreciate uh, it. It's, uh, a novel idea and it's always good it's always good to kick it with my god yeah yeah yeah, you know yeah yes mean? indeed yes yes, indeed. yes 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 man all right well thank you and uh to all those watching as we would say to mr porter and we know it's the case with him to you we say peace if you're willing to fight for it as fred hampton used to say and we'll catch you in the world and if you and if you ain't willing to fight for it <laughs> ow <laughs> what i like what i like